Today I've got what I think is a nice first example to play with to get a handle on how infinite products work. So in particular, we're going to evaluate the product as n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 minus 1 over n squared. The first thing to notice here is that we start at n equals 2 instead of n equals 1. Maybe post in the comments why it's not super interesting if you start at n equals 1. Okay, now before we get into this, how should we define the infinite product in the first place? Well, taking a cue from how we define the infinite sum in terms of the limit of partial sums, here we'll define the infinite product in terms of the limit of partial products. So in our case, that will mean that our goal will be to calculate the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the product as N goes from 2 to capital N of 1 minus 1 over N squared. And to get a handle of what's going on here, I think we should maybe make a chart. And then from that chart, maybe we can get some sort of idea as to the closed form of this partial product, which we'll obviously have to prove somehow. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation that'll make our chart work a little bit better. So let's say a sub n is equal to this 1 minus 1 over n squared term. And then we'll call p sub n equal to the nth partial product. So this will be the product as m goes from 2 up to n of a sub m. And using this notation, we can quickly build our chart. So let's notice when n is equal to 2, a sub n is 3 quarters, and p sub n is 3 quarters. When n is equal to 3, a sub n is 8 over 9, and p sub n is 2 over 3. When n is 4, we have 15 over 16 and 5 over 8. When n is 5, we have 24 over 25 and 3 over 5. When n is 6, we have 35 over 36 and 7 over 12. And then finally, when n is 7, we have 48 over 49 and 4 over 7 for that partial product. And now looking at our chart, we'll see that all of the even terms have a nice structure to them. Notice the numerator is 1 more than n, and the denominator is twice n. So here we have 2 plus 1 and 2 times 2. Here we have 4 plus 1 and 4 times 2. Here we have 6 plus 1 and 6 times 2. But the odd terms don't quite fit the same sort of pattern. But maybe we could change the denominator and the odd terms so that maybe they're not totally reduced fractions so that we could make them look like the same pattern. So let's notice that we can take this 2 over 3 and rewrite it as 4 over 6, and then it matches the patterns of the even ones. We can take this 3 over 5 and write it as 6 over 10, and this 4 over 7 can be written as 8 over 14. Or written carefully in terms of our problem, we have the product as n goes from 2 up to capital N of 1 minus 1 over n squared is capital N plus 1 over 2 times capital N. This is actually going to be really helpful for finding our infinite product, but we need to prove this formula first. And we'll do that with induction. And I'll first maybe make a little comment that the base case is essentially done. Actually, the first seven cases, or I guess six cases, are done just from our chart as we were doing some exploration. So we don't need to make the base case. So from here, we'll make an induction hypothesis. And that will be, suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 2, we have the kth case is true. So in other words, the product as n goes from 2 up to k of 1 minus 1 over n squared is in fact k plus 1 over 2 times k. Okay, but now let's consider the next partial product. So the next partial product will be the product as n goes from 2 up to k plus 1 of 1 minus 1 over n squared. So we'll take this and factor the last term out of it. So that'll be 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 quantity squared times the product as n goes from 2 up to, k of, up to k of 1 minus 1 over k squared. 
But now we can apply the induction hypothesis to this, which I've put the orange box around. So that means we can take our product, maybe put these two terms together while we're at it and rewrite it as k plus one squared minus one over k plus one squared times k plus one over two times k. So that's what we have after, again, combining this using a common denominator and then applying the induction hypothesis on this squared term. Okay, so let's see some simplification that occurs. This k plus one squared will cancel down to a k plus one to the first power by canceling out this k plus one that's in the numerator of the last term. And then furthermore, we can take this k plus one squared minus one and rewrite it as k squared plus two k plus one minus one. And we'll see that the plus one and the minus one cancel. So that leaves us with k squared plus two times k over two times k times k plus one. But let's notice that this numerator factors quite nicely. It factors as k times k plus two, and then we have two times k times k plus one in the denominator. We can finally cancel this k with this k, and that leaves us with k plus two over two times k plus one, which is the form that we wanted to achieve to prove our closed formula for this nth partial product using induction. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, let's apply this closed form in order to find this infinite product. So we just got done finding a closed form for our nth partial product. Now we're ready to finish this off. So I'll take this infinite product and rewrite it as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of this nth partial product. So that'll be the sum as the product as N goes from two up to capital N of one minus one over N squared. And I guess I should say this definition only holds if this limit exists in the first place. We kind of brushed over that though. Okay, now we can apply this claim that we proved that builds this closed form. And now we have the limit as capital N goes to infinity of N plus one over two N. We can split this up a little bit and we'll have the limit as N goes to infinity of one half plus one over two N. But now it's pretty easy to see that as n gets larger and larger and larger, one over two times n gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that portion of our limit tends to zero and we're only left with this one half. So that means in the end, our infinite product is equal to one half. And that's a good place to stop.